It's been a real long time since I've done one of these. It's been about, well, it's been over two years since the Kickstarter was finished. It's been at least 18 months since I did one of these. Certainly most of the updates from the sort of the first half of 2022 were all to do with Aiden Rising, the companion game uh, to, to Aiden Chronicle that, spoiler alert, is already out. But if you're interested in following this, uh, the development of Aiden at all, then you almost certainly already know that. Um, but yeah, if you want to know anything, I'll be skipping over all of that. So if you want to know anything about Aiden Rising, you can literally just go and buy it and play it now. So I'll be boiling this down to the more sort of tangible development updates and then sort of any actual new content for the game that's been announced. So there are 12 new characters I'll be going over, a load of visual stuff like concept art for enemies and dungeons and stuff like that. And there's also three new trailers and I'll put links for those trailers in the description. I'll cut cut it down to what I think are the most juicy bits and they'll just be playing on screen right now. So you can go and watch the full trailers if you like. These are the bits that I think are the most interesting about them. Okay, on to the development updates from Moriyama. Uh, first things first, the elephant in the room, there was a delay to the release date. But again, you will already know that because if it had stuck to the original release date, the game would already be out. It was due out in October 2022. So now we have a 2023 release date. And as far as I could find, there's been no further uh, official clarification on exactly when that is. So this delay was due to uh, having a way bigger budget than they initially expected and so they're setting their sights for the game higher in both in terms of scale and depth, you know, sort of quality. Uh, and they also had to rearrange a lot of their working conditions due to COVID. Next update is that the game will be available on Xbox Game Pass. Uh, they're still looking for ways to uh, increase their budget and they got a decent offer from Microsoft and they accepted it. It's going to be on Xbox Game Pass. DLC is the next update. We already knew that uh, we were getting two lots of DLC. There was a Sane Story DLC and a Marissa's Story DLC. Now they've announced that there is going to be a third one. We don't have any details for it yet, but it will be available to all Kickstarter backers. Next update is that 100 Heroes is in fact coming to Nintendo Switch. It was That was the only console that was kind of up in the air about whether they were going to be releasing on it. Uh, they're releasing on you know, basically all the other modern consoles and Steam. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be on Switch. Next is the main story will be fully voice acted. Uh, the whole game will consist of about 60,000 lines, so it's going to be a huge, huge task. Uh, also announced, and this is in the most recent update as of November 2022, there's going to be a theatre system. Uh, there'll be many plays to choose from that you can put on and you can assign any character you like, I think, uh, any of the roles within that play, and then you can see that play played out and the characters will all play the different characters within the play differently and that will all be voice acted as well and that little mini game feature alone consists of around 15,000 lines of dialogue which is about what you'd see in a regular game. All right on to characters first up we have Marin uh, from the League of Nations 14 years old her favorite food is mushroom risotto and she likes pretty things like flowers and stones that sparkle. She trusts and loves her brother Wyla who is the next character uh, he's 22 years old, his favourite food is vegetable juice. He's a skilled hunter that never misses his mark and he has vowed to protect his younger sister Marin, but other than that he doesn't really enjoy combat. Uh, their parents are both deceased, but he won't tell Marin how they died. Uh, next up is Code L. Hmm. Okay. Uh, 22 years old, he has an unhealthy obsession with rune lenses. He's a kind of nerdy science guy. His glasses have a mini rune lens in them, and his goal is basically to create his own artificial rune lens. Next up is Ormond. He's 36. Uh, his favorite food is an omelette. He carries an oversized backpack crammed full of tools. He's a keen miner, and he can locate ore within mines by striking rock and just listening to the rock's hum. He's very neat and fastidious in his work. Next up is Cassandra. She's an elf and she's an innkeeper. Uh, she's not especially industrious as an innkeeper. She enjoys lounging around, but uh, that doesn't stop her from tugging at the heartstrings of boys who are never sure which part of her they're allowed to look at. 
They're talking about uh, her ears there, pretty sure. Next up is Squash. Uh, it's 44 years old, like spinach, quiche, and orni ornitha. Ornitha. Name of the race, based on ornithology, because bird. Eh? Smart. Uh, he pedals in accessories and claims to be an expert and can sort treasure from trinkets, although some feel that shiny object is really his only, only uh, criterion. Next up, we have Stadler. He's a soldier, 42 years old, loves chili con carne, my guy. Uh, he's a gruff but principled soldier, knows the name of everyone he's ever trained, and uh, but he tells his soldiers he's a coward because he can't bear the thought of them dying, and that's why he, he works them extra hard. Okay, bro. Next up, we have Hakujin. Uh, <laughs> under profession for Hakujin, it says the Far East. Anyway, she's 27. And uh, she was the winner of a Kickstarter character poll. So there was a poll a little while ago that I featured in one of my previous updates with four potential characters that people could vote on. And uh, she was the one who won. She's a master ninja and a cool composed warrior. She's uh, an old friend and rival of Mio. Remember Mio? The one who, who with the brain farts? Next character is Cabana. He's a beast man, 32, loves strawberry milk. Uh, he and his people are master spring diggers. They make a living by traveling land to land, discovering hot springs and turning them into tourist destinations. Next up we have Ye Lu. She's from a, a small uh, unknown settlement in the League of Nations. Uh, she's reclusive and yet inquisitive. And uh, her kind of her struggle is that she's trying to overcome her, her shyness and find courage to uh, make contact with the outside world. The settlement that she's from uses a rune lens to cloak itself from prying eyes, and they worship the lens, and it's customary for her and her people to hide their eyes behind their hair as a sign of reverence, and so apparently this character will never ever show her eyes. Next up is Maureus, uh, 32, loves a sautéed chicken breast. He's determined that he is a mage, yet he doesn't actually know a lick of real magic. Uh, he wields a massive thing that he calls a staff but it's actually a big like iron pole with a heavy thing on the top that and and it's actually a, a mace uh, and he, he works hard on attuning himself which is really just kind of like getting pumped up to smash something so he can wield advanced magic smash stuff then we have clark who's 55 years old loves a herbal tea he's a middle-aged divorcee who manages the theater uh, he put so much effort into his theater troupe that his wife left him uh, he, he's not the showman himself, but he's the organizer and presenter, uh, but, and he always takes effort to present himself in keeping with the sense of wonder and imagination that he wants to present on the stage. So I'm guessing he's the one that we're gonna need to talk to to trigger this theatre minigame with the 15,000 lines of dialogue. Next up, throughout the course of this period that I'm covering, we've been given various little uh, sneak peeks of visual stuff from the game. Uh, aside from the characters, so I'll just kind of put it up on screen and say what it is. Uh, early concept of a camp village, a mine dungeon area, these 10 pictures of uh, new assets. Next up we've got quite a lot of monsters, we've got forest eater, uh, which I guess eats stuff in the forest. We've got a golem pulverizer, which is a variant on a rune golem that I guess pulverizes stuff. Uh, then we've got a Nikari, which is a wraith imbued with a uh, warrior's soul. Scorpion Assassin, one pretty much speaks for itself. Uh, then we've got a Hard Knock, uh, which is another rune golem variant, kind of a guardian variant it seems like. They sort of patrol uh, ruins like the rune barrows in, in Rising and smash the daylights out of anyone who wanders through there basically. Then we've got a Maiden Revenant. Once a renowned dancer, she can control her hair at her will, cast several spells at once, uh, and serves the dead countess. Uh, and finally, we just got some little pixel art stuff. Uh, we've got these couple of images, the pixel art of uh, Sane and uh, whoever else these are, just the general kind of empire people and soldiers. Then we've got uh, this little collection of characters all done in their pixel art. Uh, and finally, we've got, this is, um, I don't know if this is actually going to be a part of the game, uh, but this is just something that Murakami kind of knocked up during his time off, just kind of for fun. Uh, it's Noah, the, the main character, done in the kind of old school PlayStation pixel art style of, say, Suikoden 2. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. I can't, I've rattled through it a lot. I've skipped over a lot of stuff that I didn't think was especially like, you know, interesting or like a real update. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll put the links to all three of the trailers that I mentioned at the start 
in the description. There's also a link to my Twitch channel in the description. I speedrun Suicoden, play Suicoden, um, as well as, you know, some other games and style. It's just, yeah, yeah, it's in there if you want to check it out. If you liked the video, I'd really appreciate a subscribe. And until next time, see ya.